In the last couple of days, several bits of information, speculation, news has come out about Surface Duo, and I wanted to take a moment here and kind of give you my thoughts on them. So the first thing I want to talk about here, and I've seen a lot of comments about this, a lot of people asking me questions, what did I think about this happening? And I'm going to tell you now, rumors that Surface Duo 3 might not actually be coming on the tempo that we've now grown accustomed to where a new duo comes out every year obviously that's only happened that one time but we have duo a year later duo two you'd expect it a year after that duo three would then come out but apparently that might not be the case now it's important to note here that this is still somewhat in flux now you may have read this on an article on windows central let me pull up here real quick wherein zach bowden uh, says it right here and I'm not going to show you the rest of this article because it's it I'll tell you what it is in general It's what to expect out of surface and windows in 2022 I will link to it down below the like button so you can read it all yourself Because uh, there's a lot more in there than just duo a lot of really good stuff in here, but specifically about duo He says that what he's heard is that Microsoft currently does not intend to ship Surface Duo 3 next year and is targeting 2023 release instead. Perhaps this would give Microsoft a chance to use 2022 to focus on fixing up some of the software and OS issues that have plagued the Duo so far. And I 100% agree with that final sentiment. So if you're asking me, what do I think about the idea of Microsoft skipping 2022 in terms of releasing a Duo 3 and just focusing on hardware? I'm 100% on board with them doing that. I mean, let's be honest. When we talk about the hardware of Surface Duo 2, I really don't know what I want them to upgrade with this thing. It's got three cameras that are totally, totally serviceable. And if they can tweak the camera software, they could be really good, actually. A lot of times I think that they're quite good already. They could be very good if stuff was just tweaked a little bit more, case in point. G cam on low light photos and things like that. So the hardware here is sufficient. Now I know a lot of people will say, Shane, don't you want the camera bump to be smaller? Of course I want the camera bump to be smaller, but I'm also aware of uh, physics and the fact that cameras need depth. There are probably like five or seven lenses stacked vertically in these things. And if you can find a way to stack that many lenses vertically in this camera module while still only being, you know, however thick this is, be my guest if you can figure out how to do it maybe shoot microsoft an email and actually shoot the entire tech community a similar email because so far no one else has figured out how to do that people forget so quickly when they see a device like something like the pixel 5 that does not have a substantial camera bump they forget that this thing is a lot thicker than surface duo 2 and in fact if you took the thickness of the pixel 5 and you thinned it out until it was only as thick as duo this 12 megapixel camera array would have a bump about the exact same size as Surface Duo 2. So I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Other than just removing the camera bump entirely and just reverting, that's not going to change and I don't want them to do that anyways. But otherwise, that Snapdragon AAA is going to be fast in two years. It's going to be fast in three years. It's fast enough now. It's not going to get slower next year. This is the same thing I talked about with the 855 over here that it doesn't suddenly get slow as soon as the next one comes out it's still fast nothing's changed with android the ram is still sufficient on this thing on duo 2 the screens are 90 hertz they still look great there's really nothing i really like look at with duo 2 and go man if they could just fix this it would be perfect i think the hardware is close to perfect for me already i really do believe that they addressed really my only issues with the first one we got a higher fresh rate screen and we got better cameras and a slightly bigger battery and a newer system on a chip and more RAM. I don't want anything else. What I want is I want software improvements. So yeah, if that's their plan is to just be like, oh, it's a lower roll on hardware and let's take the money we would have been devoting towards developing that hardware earlier and put it into software development, I am a million percent on board. You've nailed the hardware, now let's nail the software. And speaking of software, there are also reports coming from similar sources that... Microsoft may be skipping Android 12, which you have seen rolling out to all sorts of devices like this. I am still waiting for Android 12 to roll out on my uh, Galaxy Fold 2, which is a little frustrating because I'd really like to cover it for you guys, but I don't have a device that has uh, got it. I've got 12L beta running here, and I've talked about that a bit, but I'd love to have 12 on my Fold, but waiting on the gods of tech to send that to me. But apparently Microsoft is going to skip Android 12 altogether and go to Android 12L 
on Duo and Duo 2. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Android 12L, basically, this is going to be a mid-step release from Google uh, to basically customize Android to work better on larger screen devices and tablets. And it makes a lot of sense for Microsoft to want to just go straight to 12L on Surface Duo and Duo 2 because you may or may not realize that a lot of people think when they look at Surface Duo that you have two screens and that Android thereby sees two screens. Well, that is not the case. Android sees one continuous screen and it doesn't care about the hinge down the middle. It sees a full tablet. And if you don't believe me, just take a screenshot and you'll get both. And if you remember on the original Duo for the longest time, even when you were in phone mode and you took a screenshot, phone mode being where the one screen is folded all the way around, you would take a screenshot expecting to get just this. You would get this plus a blank screen for the backside because it sees a tablet. It doesn't care that it's got two screens. It's a tablet to Android. So this does make a lot of sense. And let's talk very briefly about some of the things that might get better and kind of what's going on here because there's not a ton of information out there about what might change or what might get better on Duo with Android 12L. So we're going to go over here to a web page for Android 12L that uh, Android Google actually has put out to talk about what they're doing here. And basically what we're going to see a lot of is just apps being optimized for these larger screens. So like the first thing you're going to see here is this is the notification shade. And rather than just being one single notification shade, it's actually split. So you've got your quick settings here and your notifications over here because you've got the space to do that. Why not do that? In fact, if we look at something like the Z Fold and I show you the notification shade, you can see what we're talking about. That's There's plenty of space to do that. You could, you could fit both of these things on here. And in particular, if we rotate this way, there's a ton of wasted space there. So that makes a ton of sense here. However, I do want to point out that on Duo, that really doesn't make any sense. Would you want to pull down your notifications here and get your quick settings here and your notifications here? Would you want that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't want it to obscure both screens. So the reason I bring this up is that some of these things that I'm going to show you aren't going to make any sense for Duo. And that stuff needs to be kind of known and talked about. But we're going to roll through more of these. So I think this one's really important here too. They're adding a taskbar. And as you can see here, it's going to give you the ability to click something to launch an app and then drag another app up to split window that particular app. And it's something that we actually already have on the Samsung devices. You can either have it pulled out here or my preference is to have it pinned to the side like so. And then I can launch Twitter and then I can go ahead and long press Reddit. And it's exactly, exactly what we just watched here on this page. I'll show you again so you can see it. Tell me that's not exactly what Samsung has already made. And I think that that's important to address here because companies like Samsung, like Microsoft, have been long customizing Android themselves to work on these larger devices, to fill in the gaps to places where Google just hasn't really done enough work. And now what Google is doing is they're seeing that work and they're just rolling it into Android proper. They're saying, hey, that thing that Samsung did with the taskbar and dragging apps in makes a ton of sense. Let's just make that part of stock Android. So for instance, the default behavior here that I have set up is when I click, just click another app, it just switches to that app. And I like that because it allows me to quickly sort of tab between apps. But you can actually change this and make it so that a tap actually will just launch that other app. So let's go back here and let's repin this and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So we're in Twitter now and now by default when I tap Reddit, it's going to by default open it in split window. And that is sort of analogous to what Microsoft is doing with Surface Duo because what they've built on top of Android is something really similar to that. I mean, let's 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 kind of think about this for a second. You've got your device here, and what they're doing is they've just built a system wherein if you tap an app on this side of the device, it will automatically split window it here. That is all that is happening. This is again, this is a tablet. Forget the hinges here. Okay, and imagine over here, if I tapped an app, it would just split window it. 
that's all that's happening. And if I tap an app over here, it's going to split window it over here now. That is literally all that is happening with Android on Surface Duo 2 and with 12L they're going to roll some of these capabilities more directly into the operating system. How will that affect Surface Duo and Duo 2? I'm not entirely sure, but it's possible that Microsoft will be able to use Google's implementation of this sort of thing that is maybe going to run at a more system level and might run better, might have fewer bugs than what Microsoft is doing sort of baked on top. This is speculation. I'm not an Android developer, but this is just sort of where my head's at with this kind of stuff. So they also talk about improved compatibility with certain apps. So like apps like Instagram don't format correctly on larger devices. And so they're going to kind of have workarounds, just black bars. But again, this really doesn't apply too much to Surface Duo, but maybe on some apps it will. Because if you look at an app like Instagram, it's not as bad on Duo as it is on the Fold, but it could be fixed with this setting. I'll kind of show you what I mean here too. So let's launch Instagram here and you'll see that we have bars on either side. Now, one workaround of this for me is just to pin my, my uh, task bar there, and it kind of fills in a bit of that space, but we'll get rid of that just so that you can see. You see there's spaces on either side, right? So Samsung did this on their own. Well, when we go to Duo, and let's launch Instagram, you'll see that we don't get the bars, but what does happen is sometimes stuff will overlap. Like it's too tall. You can't actually see it all. So would it be beneficial for usability to squeeze this thing in a bit and put bars on either side to make Instagram a bit more usable? Possibly. That might be something that's good to have as an option. So basically, whether or not we're going to see something like a taskbar on Surface Duo 2, I kind of doubt that we will. But a lot of these things, again, we're, we're taking stuff that other developers have had to do on their own and we're rolling it into the system, which might make them run better, be less resource intensive, and potentially just have fewer bugs. And then they're also then usable by everybody, becomes sort of a community tool. So that's why Android 12L might make sense for Surface Duo. I would love to hear from some, some of you guys that might have more experience in the developer side of things that might have some intuitions about exactly what's going on here. I'd love to know what you guys think about this in the comments down below, because again, I'm not an Android developer. I'm just someone who has read these things and has a, a cursory understanding of what's going on. So again, let me know your insights down below if you do have any. Guys, thanks for making it to the end of today's video. I'll see you tomorrow on a episode of News Radar. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.